Yeah, let's start with that one. Oh wow, no. It's not the, it's not the Mayan ruins. You cut this light off as well. All right, amen. We're running a few minutes late behind. Um, I forgot to bring the laptop uh, to, to set up the Skype. You know, because used to these live preachers, and not that Everett's a dead preacher, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's more alive than some of them I know. Um, anyway, <laughs> hallelujah. So, but uh, anyway. Uh, we'll put them up on the big screen here where we can, but I forgot to bring the laptop because the church computer can't run Skype, the broadcast, and everything else. It should be. Yeah, the yeah, lights, lights, on. lights on. Okay. So, so we need to, because we're broadcasting and Skyping at the same time, so it takes a lot of, a lot of power. We could do with a, a better computer to be able to run that all together. It'd be good, but hey, uh, no worries. So hey, let's uh, just swing over our, our uh, just lively song so everybody get up and clap along. And... Uh, <coughs> You know, everybody says, we don't, we don't sing Jewish. If you ever sung hallelujah, you sung Hebrew. So, uh, so there you go. Or what was it you said? Praise hallelujah. Praise hallelujah. There you go. Praise hallelujah. <laughs> Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, as we come today, we come in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the peace that you bring unto us, Lord, and, and the peace that we can extend to one another. We pray today and thank you for this revival and thank you for this last uh, service, Lord, and thank you that we've got Brother Napu'u Noah uh, to preach for us, Lord, and looking forward to what uh, you have for us through your servant. There, we thank you for all the messages this week and, and for how the Holy Spirit has worked and and uh, done the things that's been done. We thank you for each one here today, and thank you for all the visitors we've had this week, and do pray that salvation would come to souls from this. We do thank you, and we love you, Lord, and we pray you be with us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You may be seated. All right, let's sing another one. Let's say what we sing. Um, <laughs> do I'm so glad? Yes. Yeah. Can't really sit down. Well, now I'm so glad Jesus set me free. 
I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. Well, Satan had me down, but Jesus set me free. Satan had me bound, but Jesus set me free. Satan had me bound, but Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. Well, now I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. Well, when I was in trouble, Jesus set me free. When I was in trouble, Jesus set me free. When I was in trouble, Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. Well, now I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. Well, this world had got me down. But Jesus lifted me. This world had got me down. But Jesus lifted me. This world had got me down. But Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. Well, now I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. You can be seated. Oh, you got him? Okay, you can. Yeah. All right. Anyway, all right. Let's yeah. Uh, right, no, let's just, I'll leave it at that and we'll, uh, um, um, these people, the houses, um, <laughs> are going to sing for us. Jane and Tartan. Justice for everyone. <laughs> Darn my short stature. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that works. <laughs> we got the, the quick fix there. Oh, yeah, perfect. Uh, so, um, so there was uh, this teacher, right? So there's this teacher that um, asked her students to bring in um, a, a symbol of their, of their faith. Uh, so, uh, you know, three of the students said there was a, a Jewish boy that brought in a menorah. You know, he took it up to his teacher, and she said, oh, wh wh what faith are you? And he said, oh, I'm Jewish. There's a, a Catholic boy that brought up a, a crucifix, and he said, I'm Catholic. And another little boy brought up a casserole, and she said, well, wh what faith are you? He's like, oh, I'm Baptist. <laughs> 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 so <laughs> so it, it's... It, it warms my heart to see that uh, on either side of the Atlantic, you know, us Baptists, we still like to buffet our buddies daily. So <laughs> that's been great. <laughs> but uh, Pastor asked us to share our, our testimonies briefly before um, before we sing. Um, so I'll, I'll be the gentleman and let my wife go first. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Okay, so um, I was raised uh, actually in a Catholic home, and... Um, my parents took me to church, um, but in the Catholic faith, there comes a point in time where you go through, um, um, not first communion, what's it called? Confirmation. Confirmation, confirmation yeah. where you're actually confirming, yes, this is what I believe, and this is why I believe it. And, and I just, we were going through these classes, and I, there was just something in my spirit that says, this is not right. And um, I am thankful for my teacher who said, this is between you and the Lord. And so if this is not something that you believe, then don't come back because this is this is you confessing you are now an adult don't come back so i went home and i said mom i don't have to go back my teacher says i don't have to go back anymore so i'm not going back and 
And so um, I was the third of five girls, so they were like, okay, that's fine. You know, they weren't as, you know, poignant. So, but I still knew that, um, I knew that there was a God, but I was now lost because I had no um, religion, so to speak, because that's all it was. It was a, you know, kneel, sit down, you know, pray, do your rosary. It was religion. Mm -hmm. And I, I knew there was something not right in that, but I was still lost. And so um, I went off to college. I was a freshman um, my college year, and um, my roommate was a Baptist pastor's uh, daughter. And she invited me. She, she lived a, a life that I would say was um, – was biblical, and I knew that, that there was something different about her, and um, and so I asked her what it was, and she said, well, I have a faith in uh, in Jesus Christ, and I said, oh, I, I know of him, and she said, oh, well, what do you know, and I said, well, you know, I, I know that he died, and that's really what I knew, and uh, so she said, well, I want you to come, and she invited me to a uh, Fellowship for Christian Athletes uh, meeting, and they had a pastor there, I don't remember his name, um, where he shared the gospel, and he shared that um, that we are that God loved us so much that He sent Jesus to die, and He didn't just die, but He proved that He was God, and He rose from the grave um, to demonstrate His love for us, and to demonstrate that He has power over everything and anything. And this morning we talked about the Holy Spirit and how that power is in us to conquer anything and every. Uh, sin that, that may beset us and hold us captive. And I am so thankful um, for her and for that pastor. And in that moment, knowing that love, that there is nothing that I did to deserve it, for I certainly did not. I was seeking um, the Lord, and he is faithful for, uh, his word says, seek and you shall find. Um, search with your whole heart. And I, I, was, I was desperately seeking, but I had no idea what I was looking for. But he knew, and he found me, uh, and he brought me to salvation and I am so thankful for that um, because I didn't deserve it. Uh, I certainly don't earn it. Um, but I live a life now where I, I, just out of thanksgiving for him, I know that I don't have to work to keep my salvation. I know that he has done it once for all. Um, but that I live a life that is honoring and pleasing. And the, the Bible says, be ye holy for I am holy. So Amen. that is my desire for my life um, and for uh, y'all as well. So that's my testimony. Uh, well, I, uh, I grew up in a, uh, a Christian home, um, praise the Lord for that, and uh, my parents were faithful in, in taking me to church. Uh, so about the uh, the age of eight years old, um, I, I recognized that, you know, there was nothing that I could do to make myself right with God, that it was only through Jesus Christ that I could be saved. And, uh, you know, that term saved, we, we say that a lot, but it means to be delivered from the penalty of our sin, and, and Jesus Christ came and died on the cross um, so that he would take the punishment that we rightly deserved on himself, so that he could in turn offer us the gift of eternal life. So uh, when I was young, at the age of eight, like I said, I you know fell under the conviction that I needed to get saved. So I I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. I accepted you know the the sacrifice that He made for us, that His blood would cover my sin. So I I accepted that. I accepted Him as my Savior. Uh, and and I was shortly after I was I was baptized to to show as a public profession of, of my faith in him. And uh, so I, I um, you know, continued to grow up in the church, but it really wasn't, there wasn't much depth to the teaching. They taught a lot about salvation, but I didn't, I didn't grow as a Christian. So towards my uh, later teenage years, I would, I would certainly say I was backslidden. Um, you know, walked away from God, didn't really desire the things of God. Uh, but then, you know, things started to change after I, I joined the, the U.S. Navy, um, started going back to church, uh, met my wife while I was in training in South Carolina. We met two months later. We were engaged. Five months after that, we got married. <laughs> so here we are eight years later. <laughs> so Nine praise the Lord. <laughs> Nine months later, we had a baby. Yeah, so we, we did things very quickly. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, just through, through that relationship, and, you know, she was very faithful at church. And, you know, soon after getting married and, um, you know, having a child, I realized, man, I need to grow up. Um, but, you know, just through church and then the church that we go to now in uh, Groton, Connecticut, Community Baptist Church, that's where we really, for the first time, came under the, the preaching and teaching of God's word mm -hmm. under uh, Pastor John Lutka there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we really, we, we went in there. It was a funny story because uh, we, we showed up and they were in a, a storefront at the time before they actually built uh, our own building. And uh, she, she was kind of hesitant to go in there. And she's like, oh, I'm, not, I'm not so sure about this. And I said, oh, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. Let's just go check it out. So we went in there. We sang some, some hymns, you know, and uh, he started preaching. 
And it's like we were hooked. We're like, man, I've never heard anything like this before. That was amazing. So we, uh, yeah. yeah, it was just the spirit of God was, was in there and, and showing us that these things were true. You know, we ought to be like the Berean Christians who, who yeah. search the scriptures day and night to see whether these things are so. Mm-hmm. So we started to grow there, and the church grew tremendously, more than we ever had in our entire lives. And then um, in 2010 was when I felt the Lord really calling me to go into full-time ministry. Um, so we, we started a Bible study out of our home for, uh, for young men, which is now actually on the submarine base Good there Lord. in Groton. So we're able to minister to the, the young military men there. Um, and then, uh, you know, I met Pastor Bob over the Internet, and uh, a year and a half later, here we are. <laughs> so, but, uh, you know, it was, it was there's, a, there's a song that says, uh, but for the grace of God, there go I. Uh, and I don't know that song, so we're going to sing Amazing Grace. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a familiar song, but really, I mean, when you think about the words, amazing grace, God's grace is so amazing that, that he would save a wretch like me. You know, I didn't deserve it. So, yeah. And so we love, even just between our testimonies, he was saved in a Christian home very young. I was saved when I was much older. I was 19. And so it just goes to show there's nothing that you can ever do that will – uh, keep you from God's love that you can't be too old uh, and you can't be too young as long as you truly understand um, your sin and that God has forgiven you and so I just love that between the two of us it shows God's grace completely yeah, amen. So. amen so it is amazing so we're going to sing about it and no, please join us yes please join us please we're going to sing the <laughs> first second and last verse of amazing grace if you had it memorized that's what it would be oh is it playing yeah okay <laughs> Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Back in uh, 2001. 2001. Yes, sir.
Yes. Well, what a blessing it is uh, to be able to uh, minister to people uh, even who are across uh, in another continent. And uh, as uh, your pastor mentioned that uh, my name is uh, Everett Napuuno, and I was uh, born in Hawaii, obviously, along <laughs> and uh, my... Uh, my testimony is that uh, my mom and dad met in California while my dad was in the Navy. And uh, uh, they were married. Uh, they're in the San Francisco Bay Area. And then uh, they, uh, uh, he moved back to Hawaii and finished up in the Navy. And um, I was uh, born and, and uh, raised in a Christian home. I appreciate the testimony of those two, uh, two young people. And, uh, and so... Uh, uh, at a very young age, I came to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, was baptized. And uh, what, a, what a blessing it is to, know, to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, to know that your sins are forgiven. And by the, by the way, can you all hear me? Yes. All right. Amen. And uh, so uh, I, I appreciate this opportunity, by the way, to, to preach the last message of your revival and, and what an honor it is. And I pray that this week that you have been blessed and challenged and revived spiritually. Amen. amen. By, by the way, you can say amen, okay, once in a while. You know, you just feel like it. Just go ahead. And, and uh, I like it when people uh, respond. And, uh, amen. I like that. There we go. <laughs> Uh, praise hallelujah, amen. <laughs> okay. But uh, this week, this week, the theme of your uh, revival service has been in Christ. Let me say, let me say that in Christ, uh, you and I uh, have hope, don't we? And and so, uh, I wanna I wanna preach on that thought this morning, and. Uh, I want to mention that in Christ is mentioned in the New Testament 76 times. 76 times the emphasis is in Christ. And, and so uh, uh, what a wonderful position it, uh, to be in, to know again that your sins are forgiven. And uh, that you and I, you and I, the moment we receive Jesus Christ, are blessed forevermore. Amen? Amen. And, and so what I want to touch on this morning is, uh, are some things that, because we are in Christ, we have the moment we receive Him as Savior. I want to say, first of all, that in Christ, you and I have eternal life. Uh, in John chapter 3, verse 15, the Lord Jesus Christ is speaking. He says that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. And a very, a very familiar verse, John 3, 16. Uh, you can quote it with me if you want. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that's, o that's only possible in Christ. Amen? And uh, I also want to say concerning eternal life, uh, and that is eternal life is a gift. The Bible says... Well, the wages of sin is death, but the what? The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so this morning, in Christ, we have eternal life. And by the way, it's given to us freely, amen? It's a, it's a free gift. And uh, uh, what a what a uh, what a blessing that is to know you didn't have to work for it, you didn't have to try and earn it, and and uh, try and uh, try and impress God by your good works. No, it is a free gift, freely given to you, once and for all. I, I also want to say that eternal life 
that we have in Christ, it's an abundant life. Amen? It's abundant life. Uh, John chapter 10 and verse 10, Jesus speaking, he says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. That word, now by the way, that word abundant, abundantly means super added. It means over and above. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, when you know Jesus Christ, your life is abundant. It's, uh, God just keeps... I mean, God just keeps adding and adding and adding. Amen. The more we, the more we grow in Christ, uh, it it just it just gets better and better. It gets gooder and gooder. Amen. <laughs> I also want to say that eternal life that we have in Christ means that we will never die. Uh, John chapter eleven. Go ahead and turn to John chapter eleven. I like what the Lord Jesus Christ uh, says here as he's speaking to Martha. John chapter 11, verse 25 and 26. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? You know what? The body may die. Uh, but you and I, our soul and spirit, will not die. Amen. Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 8, Paul said to be absent from the body is to be, pre to be present with the Lord. So in Christ we have eternal life. Guess what? We'll never die. Amen? Amen. I also want to, I, I want to move on this morning. But in Christ, because of eternal life, uh, it was... Do you, do you know that it was promised to us before the world began, before the world was created? Uh, Titus chapter 1, Titus 1, 2 says, In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. What a blessing that is, that uh, we were already destined for eternal life before God even created the earth. And so it's in Christ that we have this. Amen. And then finally, eternal life is in the Lord Jesus Christ himself. In 1 John chapter 5 and verse 20, you don't have to turn there. 1 John 5, 20, the latter part of the verse says, We are in him that is true, even in his son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. The question you... The question I have for you this morning is, do you have eternal life in Jesus Christ? If you don't, let me, let me beg you, receive him today as your Savior. Know that your sins are forgiven. Amen? And experience the life that only Jesus Christ can give you. I want to mention, not only do we have eternal life in Jesus Christ this morning, but we also have a new father. John chapter, John chapter 1, verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And that is not the verse I wanted. That is not, yeah, that's right. That's the verse I wanted to read. <laughs> we, we, have, we have a new father this morning, if you are in Christ. Uh, obviously, before a person is saved, their father is the devil, isn't he? And uh, they, uh, people who are unsaved are believing the lies of their father. But once you are in Christ, uh, you have a new father. I want you to know that about our, our, our father, well, you can mention this about the, about the Trinity, uh, but he is all-knowing. 1 John chapter 3, verse 20, For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart, and he knoweth all things. Aren't you glad this morning that, uh, that in Christ you have a new father who is all-knowing? I mean, he's omniscient, and he knows, he knows exactly what you and I need. Uh, he, knows, he knows our lives, amen? We, 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 we can trust him with our lives this morning. Uh, but also, he is all-powerful. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 26 with men it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. 
Luke chapter 1, verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Let me say this morning, God can do anything but fail. And when you and I are in Christ, He can do anything but fail in our, with our lives. Amen? But I also want to say that in Christ, we have a Father who loves us. Uh, turn, turn to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. First John chapter 4 and verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Aren't you glad this morning that in Christ we have a Father who loves us? Amen? Amen. <laughs> and uh, that, that love is an all-giving love. Amen? A, a self-sacrificing love. Uh, notice with me in verse 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man had seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us. His love is perfected in us, is made mature. And uh, we, we, can, we can completely uh, trust in God, uh, knowing that He loves us and he, he cares for us. I need to move on this morning. <laughs> Um, uh, as in Christ, we have a new father. He, he knows us. He's all knowing. He's all powerful. He loves us, but he's also faithful. Amen. <laughs> we, uh, we serve a faithful God. First Corinthians one nine, first Corinthians one nine says, God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. In Christ this morning, we, uh, we, we have a God who is going to be faithful to us uh, under any circumstance, uh, whatever, whatever the need may be. Amen. Let me say, as we move on this morning, that in Christ, not only do we have a new, uh, uh, we have eternal life, we have a new father, but you know what? We have a new family. We have a new family. Um, how do we know this morning? How do we know that we are the children of God? In Romans chapter 8 and verse 14, Romans 8, 14. Romans chapter 8 and verse 14. We read these words. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If you are in Christ this morning, you have a new family. And uh, the, the thing is, we are, we are led by the Holy Spirit of God, aren't we? Once, we? once we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit. Uh, notice, in, notice in verse 16. Verse 16 says, The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The Spirit will, will, will uh, bear with your spirit. That you are a child of, of God. You know him as your Savior. Uh, let me ask you this morning. Are you, uh, do you have the Holy Spirit of God indwelling you? Is he ministering to you and, and identifying it and, and validating that you are his child? And then uh, being in the family of God, uh, you are, you're going to practice righteousness. In 1 John chapter 2 and verse 29. 1 John 2.29 says, If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Your desire, once you know Jesus Christ is your Savior, will be to do righteousness. Yeah. Um, in, in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 3, uh, we read these words, And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. So in Christ... In Christ, we have a new family, and as a child, as one of his children, guess what? I'm going to want to do right. I'm going to want to obey his commandments. I'm going to want to be led by the Spirit. Amen? And, and, and uh, no better family to be, be acquainted with than, your, than with the family of God. And uh, let, let me say that I, uh, I have uh, four adult children, and I have... Um, 
two of them who are not with us. Uh, one is married and in Indiana, and uh, uh, he has he has our only grandchild. And then I have a daughter who's in Hawaii right now, uh, teaching in a Christian school. And and then I have two of my boys here at our church, and uh, they they help they help in the church here at the ministry. But you know what? Uh, it, our family separated, and it's a. You know, it, it, it makes it hard sometimes, you know, especially with the wife, you know, and you know how uh, mothers are very, uh, they, they enjoy it when, when their children are together. And, and I was talking to my wife, she said, you know what, uh, we're not going to just be the two of us this Christmas. We're not going to be alone. We need to be with our kids, you know, and uh, because uh, uh, our two boys, one is going to be going to North Dakota and the other one's going to be going to Missouri. And so... Uh, we're going to we're going to make sure that we're with family this Christmas. Amen. And, and so. Uh, uh, but you know what? You know, what's even more exciting is when you and I are in the family of God. That, that's the best, that's the best family to be with. And and so it's exciting as I as I look at uh, Jedburgh Baptist Church, we have people that are there who want to be with God's family. Amen. We want with God's people. And, and so that's uh, uh Christians, by the way, ought to be your best friends. You know that. Sir, we ought to, uh, uh, we we ought to enjoy being with with those who are of like faith and, and practice, who love the Lord. I want to uh, go on here, but in Christ, uh, we have we have the victory over sin. By the way, uh, uh, turn turn to Romans chapter six. Romans chapter 6, and uh, Satan, Satan, by the way, is going <laughs> to, he's going to try and cause us to sin. He, he's not going to bother, uh, bother the lost, right? He has them under captivity. Uh, he's going to try and affect uh, God's children. Uh, he's going to try and wreck and to ruin and destroy and to bring under captivity, uh, you know, those who those who are are wanting to serve God, those who love God. But you know what? We have the victory over sin. Here in Romans six verse six, uh, it says, "Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that we should not what we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin." Verse 8, now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we, all, we shall also live with him. Look, look, at, look at verse 11. Likewise reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. What a, so in Christ, we do have the victory over sin. We do not have to listen when sin comes knocking at our door, do we? We can have victory over sin. Um, that word reckon means to, to count, to uh, treat accordingly. I mean, uh, I, I do not have to come under sin's control and domination. Why? Because uh, when I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, the penalty, of, uh, the penalty of sin has been done away with, excuse me, the uh, presence of sin has been done away with in my life. Um, in 1 Corinthians 15, 57, the Apostle Paul said, But thanks be unto God, which giveth us a victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So let me say, Christians, this morning, you have the victory over sin. Why? Because you are in Christ. Amen? And, and, and every, every day as we go uh, and, and go out into the world, uh, you you do not have to come under sin's domination and control in your life, but we can uh, we can reckon ourselves alive in Jesus Christ. I want to say this morning uh, that in Christ we can know the truth. John John fourteen verse six, Jesus said, "I am the way, what, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me." What, a, what an exciting truth that we, <laughs> that in Christ, uh, I don't have to believe the lies. 
of the devil. I don't have to believe the lies of the world that are out there. John chapter 8, verse 32, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. <laughs> Jesus said that, by the way. So, so the question this morning for you and I is, uh, am I, do I know the truth of Jesus Christ? It, is, it, uh, is it operating in my life? 3 John chapter 4, excuse me, 3 John 4, uh, we read these words. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Are we, are we walking in truth today? Are we choosing to walk in truth? And because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I like what Jesus said in John chapter 8 and verse 36. He said, if, if the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Why? Why? Because I have the truth. Amen? Let me, let me read this to you, a poem by uh, a dear brother. He wrote this poem. Let me read it to you. It's titled, The Sun Shall Make You Free. As I walk life's stormy sea, there was no hiding place to flee. The waves were raging high and rough. I fought with all my might to save myself, but that wasn't enough. I turned to the left, then to the right, only to plunge deeper into the darkness of night. For I was bound by the shackles of sin, blinded by darkness within. I staggered, I stumbled, and fell, each time falling closer to the flames of an eternal hell. In agony I cried in despair, Oh God, please hear my feeble prayer. Then I heard a voice from above speak in tones of tender love. My son shall make you free indeed, and he will meet your every need. Now I no longer walk in darkness of night, for I'm free walking in his holy light and it's all made possible because of jesus christ amen and that and that, and that we we know the truth and uh because we know the truth we can live the truth and live accordingly let me say this morning also that in christ we can know god's ways in, in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9. Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9. We read, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And uh, the world today uh, is looking is looking all around for answers and, and ways and ideas to, to solve problems. Uh, by the way, this is only made possible when a person comes to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. And, and uh, the, longer, the longer I've known the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, uh, the more I, I've been able, through His Word, glean His thoughts. And as a result, I desire to do His ways. You know that? <laughs> and uh, uh, there's, no, there's no better way of living than to choose God's ways this morning. You know that? And, and uh, I'll tell you right now, uh, uh, people who are, are not saved and, and the sinners in the lost world, their, uh, their, uh, their ways and their thoughts are totally contrary to what the Bible says. And, and so I, I, would incur I would encourage you, to use the Bible wherever you have an opportunity and share God's way, God's thoughts and God and and uh, God's ways of doing things, and uh, but of course uh, that is only made possible uh, truly when a person receives Jesus Christ as their Savior. I wanna I wanna close with uh, with the final point this morning, and that is in Christ there are pleasures forevermore. There are pleasures forevermore. Turn to Psalm 16, verse 11. Psalm 16 and verse 11. By the way, did you all have a meal this afternoon? Before, uh, did, you, did you all have a good, uh, good, good lunch? 
Amen. Uh, I see some of you are falling asleep there. Uh, don't, don't. <laughs> Sometimes after a good meal, uh, you get a little relaxed and sitting down in a comfortable chair, you know. And <laughs> no, but uh, uh, in, in, in Psalm 16, Psalm 16, verse 11, um, it says, Thou wilt show me the path of life, and thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. In Christ, in Christ this morning, there are pleasures forevermore. The moment you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, guess what? Things, things have gotten better and better and better. Maybe your circumstances don't look a whole lot better, but I tell you, in Christ, things, get, things are better forevermore. Amen? You have, you have eternal life, folks. Amen? It, uh, forevermore. Uh, in, uh, let me just mention some of the pleasures that you have. In Psalm 36, and verse 7, Psalm 36, verse 7 says, How excellent is thy loving kindness. God's loving kindness is with, with you and I forevermore. I mean, what well, that that is a that that is a wonderful thought. Uh, his kindness, his help, his encouragement. Uh, notice in verse eight of Psalm thirty-seven, they shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. He gives us abundant satisfaction this uh, this afternoon. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, the world, the world uh, will not satisfy you. By the way, you know that? I mean, uh, there is there is no true lasting satisfaction doing uh, the things of the world. Uh, only, only uh, in Christ, when you and I please Him and do His will, is there satisfaction. Amen. Uh, and then uh, back to in Psalm sixteen, verse eleven again. There is fullness of joy. That's one of the that's one of the pleasures that we have forevermore. Psalm 16, verse 11. Thou wilt show me the path of life, and thy presence is fullness of joy. By the way, are you experiencing the fullness of joy in your life right now? I mean, is there are you are you content with your uh, uh with with who you are in Christ? I pray that you are. Amen. And then uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. One of the pleasures you and I experience is that we have the peace with God. The moment you accept Him as your Savior, you have peace with God. And, and you, I mean, there's nothing else you and I have to do uh, to, to uh, experience the peace with God. We just, we just, we just, we just know that uh, He's with us, Amen, forevermore. But then uh, also we have the peace of God. Uh, Philippians four, verse six and seven: Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth what all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Aren't you glad this morning that you can uh, you can have uh, the pleasures, spiritual pleasures of God, every day, and and enjoy and enjoy the life that is yours in Christ. The final thing I want to mention is that you and I, because we are in Christ, is that we have a home in heaven. That's going to be one. Of, that's one of the eternal pleasures that that we're looking forward to. Amen. Uh, and 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 I and because Jesus Christ is our hope of glory this morning, I close with these two verses, John chapter 14, verses two and three. The Lord Jesus Christ speaking to his uh to his uh disciples. He is about ready to leave, right? In a in a in a, in a well, in a matter of days, uh he's going to be nailed in a, ma a matter of days, he's gonna be nailed to the cross. He's going to die and, of course, be uh, uh, and rise again the third day and, and uh, spend 40 days on the earth. And then he was going to ascend into heaven. But he said in John 14, verse 2 and 3, he said, In my Father's house are many mansions. 
If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. In Christ this morning, uh, do you have a home in heaven? I pray that you do. I pray that you are experiencing all, all the, the blessings, the spiritual blessings that God, that God has for you. <laughs> but, but you have to know him as your Savior. Amen? And, uh, I, I pray that uh, this, uh, you will, you will uh, take what has been preached this past week. And I, I pray that you and I will uh, just uh, ask God to revive us every day through his Holy Spirit. And uh, that we will, we will uh, live according to the position that we have in Christ. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I do want to thank you for Jedburgh Baptist Church. I want to thank you uh, for uh, Pastor Strachan. I thank you, Lord, for uh, each and every... Uh, person, Lord, this morning who has come to church, and I pray that you'll, uh, Lord, uh, speak to our hearts and that we will live according to our position in Christ. And, and I pray, dear Lord, that if there's someone this, this afternoon that has not received Jesus Christ as their Savior, I pray today would be the day of salvation where they repent of their sin and, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ who died for them on the cross. Bless uh, the remainder of this day. Give us, uh, and, and may we continue to uh, live in, in uh, fellowship and in obedience to you. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Aloha to all of you. Amen. Thank you. Yes, sir. No, um, it's a shame to, to to bring this revival to an end. To be honest, um, you know it's been it's been good. It's been a great week, and we've had good messages. Another good message to end it off on, by being in Christ and uh, just seeing how God dwells with us. And God's plan was to dwell with us, and God's plan is to dwell with us. You know, God's original plan was to dwell with us, and God's end game is for us to dwell with Him. A new heaven and a new earth that He has prepared for us. And, uh, you know, we, we look forward to these things, but you will not see that unless you're born again. You will not see that unless you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And that's what Brother Everett's been preaching on today is about being in Christ and Christ liveth in me and these things. You know, and we discussed this morning that if a person doesn't have the Holy Spirit, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, if we have not the Spirit of Christ, we cannot be of him. We cannot be saved. You know, and we come down to a very simple gospel message that we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And people say, what is sin? Sin is transgression of the law. Mm -hmm. You say, what is the law? Well, we can look at, uh, at uh, you know, any, put any gods before him. Has God always been your first God? Have you ever taken God's name in vain? Have you ever told a lie? That's probably the simplest one and the one that everybody can, can hold their hand up to. You know, have we ever stolen something, even if it was that small? So if we've said yes to those who are lying thief. Jesus said, if we look with lust, it's adultery in the heart. The Bible talks about blasphemy. It says, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. That's blasphemy, very serious sin in God's eyes. And we will stand before God and be judged of these things. And some people say, well, I don't believe in God. Well, if God is real, if he judges by those Ten Commandments, would you be innocent or guilty? You know, and looking at these things, we would be guilty. Right. The Bible says the wage of sin is death. And you see, the, the penalty for sin is eternity in hell. Mm. However, because of what Christ did, he came, he lived a sinful life. He died on the cross as we, sinless, sin, sorry, a sinless life, thank you, a sinless life, and uh, died on the cross to make atonement for our sins, rose again for our justification, as Romans 4 tells us. And we can be saved if we put our trust in him. Right. And we can be saved from hell because of what Jesus Christ. It's not an automatic thing. If we could be saved in any other way, Jesus need not have died. Right. You know, Paul said if Christ is not risen, we are, we are still in our sins. Mm -hmm. 
He had to rise. So if you're here today, if you're watching on the broadcast, you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I mean, and I'm talking about, I'm not talking about a, something that you do progressively. I'm talking about one time in your life when you said, God, forgive me, a sinner. Amen. God, I have sinned against you. Amen. It's not something that we, we work towards. It's not something that we suddenly wake up one day and we're saved. Amen. You know, it's not a course that we take. You know, it's not something that we send away for. We collect X amount of stamps and we send away. It's, a one, it's one time where we get before God and say, God, we have sinned. I have right. sinned. Not right. we, but I have sinned. Right. Come short of your glory. Yeah. Repent of those sins and ask Christ to save you. Save your soul and accept him as your Savior. Yeah. Accept God's free gift. And you can be born again and you can experience what Brother Everett's been talking about. Yeah. And you will live with God in eternity. I hope today that each one of you saved. If you're not, I do pray that you would consider these things. And today would be the day of your salvation. Amen. Those watching on the broadcast, I offer you the same thing. If you would like to know how to be saved, you know we can we can show you from the Bible how you can know Jesus is your personal Lord and Savior. It's not about being good; it's about Him being good. Right. Our gracious heavenly Father, as we come to you today, we come in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your goodness and for your blessing. I pray now for anyone here that does not know you as the Lord and Savior. I pray that you would work upon them today. I pray that the Holy Spirit would bring conviction uh, where needed, Lord, and and, uh, we pray that today would be the day of salvation. I do pray, Lord, that uh, you work upon the Christian uh, that is is you're trying to draw today, Lord, for whatever purpose. I pray that all things today would be accomplished for your honor and glory. I pray against anything that would try and cause hindrance Lord, rebuke it in the name of Jesus and pray and loose the Holy Spirit of truth, love, power, and of a sound mind upon each one of us. Lord, and just have your perfect will in today. We thank you for the message. Thank you for all that's been done. Lord, as we have this invitation, may it be done for your honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. If you need to come today, if you need to know Jesus, please do. Please do. If you want to come and pray.
Ask Brother Chris if you just dismiss us and uh, close out these meetings.